Good news. In a minute. Welcome back to another day off. Where we left off last time, we were just firing up the vehicle. We would just done the valve cover gasket, the idle air control valve. We found that that gasket was folded on cylinders two and three, so huge improvement. I was thinking we'll kick this off with a cold start and then we'll tinker around with some other items on the car today. It is idling beautifully. I am super happy about that. Let me show you the dash. So the needle is holding beautifully. RPMs are holding great. Secondary air just kicked off. Still got the old gasoline in it too. So we still have the old codes. I'm gonna be deleting these right now. Wanna get a nice clean slate I can go off. See if we have any fuel trim issues in the future. All right, so check engine light's been deleted. Yeah, idle is beautiful, it's great. Oh, we got a xenon issue. That's no good. I just revved it up. Take a look at the speedometer. Ah, oh, this is the gauge cluster issue you was talking about. We have a traction control light. We just had a brake light come on. The speedometer is sitting at over 2,000 at idle, which is incorrect. The fuel gauge just crept up. It was almost empty. Yeah, that's not 3,500 RPM. So we have a weird, funky gauge cluster issue going on. I don't know what it is. It's kind of a whole car electronics type deal, uh, but we'll have to do some more digging. Maybe it's a gauge cluster issue, maybe a DME issue, I'm not really sure. So, good thing I was sitting here with the camera and we were able to catch that. So, maybe it was a coincidence right after I cleared the check engine light. I'm not too sure. Definitely just confirmed the original owner's concern was he was driving it, the gauge cluster read that it was overheating, the gauge cluster was acting weird. Um, I hadn't seen it up until this point, but now I just did. So it's great that we confirmed the issue. Now we can try to figure out what the source of it is. What I'd like to do real quick is take the cover off of, take this cover off the DME. And I wanna check the connections. So this is the cover for the DME or the digital motor electronics. This is going to be our DME. We also have some other relays and some fuses in here. Let's check the connectors. Connectors nice and dry. Nice and dry. Ah, look at that. We have oil in the DME connector. So we might have some oil in the harness. Interesting. Right down here, we have some oil showing on the pins. I'll move the camera and get you a better look. A little bit of oil in there too. There's definitely some oil down in the base of that connector and that connector, including just a little touch of oil in this back one. So, 
very interesting. We might have gotten oil down into the DME. We could take the cap off and inspect it. Uh, might be able to get access to it. I'll pull the I'll pull the DME out real quick and see if I can get a better view inside. to know maybe a little bit of damage there this is going to be the back side I believe clean so far from what I'm seeing. We haven't had oil penetrating down in, into the DME yet. Which is good. I'm not sure if this is the issue that is causing the gauge cluster to go crazy. But it's a good clue. Alright, we'll squirt it with some quick dry electronics cleaner real quick. I'm going to take it apart one more time, make sure none of that electronics cleaner penetrated too far down. Yep, looks nice and dry. The only little bit of moisture I'm seeing is right here, bottom of the plastic. See some oil there. Alright, looks nice and clean. Let's go clean up the connector side. We have oil on this connector here. Hopefully you can see that. And we have oil on this connector, or we had it in this port. So we need to clean these three plugs. I guess we ought to fire it up and see what the gauge cluster does. Alrighty, gauge cluster's still up. Yeah, RPMs are stuck. So DSC and brake light is off. However, RPMs are still up and fuel level's still up. All right, I'm rocking the head mount for you guys. That's much. That's how much I care about good angles. So, okay, we're gonna be taking these torques out. I want to take this gauge cluster out, see what the connector looks like on the back side. So I think it's like a T15 or a T20. We 
can do too is get this steering wheel up and out of the way, down and out of the way, I should say. All right, so let's check these connectors. Instrument cluster is clean. I'm not seeing any, seeing any oil inside the connectors, which is great. Let's check the connectors. Looking clean. Looking clean. Let's wipe all this scum out while we're in here, too. It's pretty gnarly. And that's how you take a gauge cluster out, just right here and right here. Traction control. Interesting. Traction control light wasn't on before. Well, so far so good. I reconnected the cluster. The bulb warnings are there. Those are real. Uh, fuel gauge is back down. RPMs are back down. Temperature gauge is correct. I've been running it for a minute. It's running great. Um, I just want to check the oil pressure switch before I call this one good because I don't want this to happen again and I'm curious where that oil is coming from that's making its way up to the DME. So let's go check that oil pressure switch. But I think for now the gauge cluster is okay. You see this air box, unplug this mat. That looks clean. Oh, well, that proves that we need an oil filter housing. I've been wondering about that, but it's well soaked down there, so I'll get that ordered up. Cool. Well, it's clean. They're all clean. You know what? It was probably from the valve cover gasket leak with the ignition coils. I bet we could probably find oil. Uh, I mean, it's a little wet. Oh yeah, that's our source. That's our source. Let me get a mirror. It's hard to see, but if you can see, basically there's, coil, there's oil sitting on the bottom of the connection for the ignition coil to the harness. So that means that when this car was leaking oil onto the valve cover, it was following the electrical current from the spark plug tube up the ignition coil, through the ignition coil, into the harness and then feeding back and up into the DME. It's not the oil pressure switch or from the ground just being fully saturated down here because this, this ground plug was just swimming. That's what I think it's from. Let's see what this one looks like. Well, number three is the worst. So let's clean that out. We'll get it reinstalled. This stuff evaporates and makes my hands so cold.
I believe that is the conclusion to our oil issue. I think that the valve cover was saturating those plugs. It was following the wire back into the DME box. It's not coming from the oil pressure switch. That's my best guess on where it's coming from. As far as what else I want to get done today, thinking it's not a bad idea to get started on the breather. I could probably get it done pretty quick. And this time I'm going to do it with the intake inside the vehicle. I'm just going to get access from the side. I also need to get that DESA solution ordered up. I haven't decided what I want to do about that. I was thinking about just scabbing that DESA, but then I can't drive that car. I'm going to do this breather a little bit different. We're going to rock the head cam. Please feel free to comment. Let me know how you like it as opposed to my traditional style of filming. Make sure the pin's still in. Yeesh. Again, this pin's trying to walk away on me. Keeps trying to run away. I think we're gonna leave this guy out permanently from now on. Can't take any more chances with this Disa valve. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, we got that dipstick tube out. We're gonna renew that O-ring one day too, so. We need better lighting in the shop, don't we? Yes, we do. Ten millimeter nut. That's right here. Out. Ooh, it's a lot of oil on the back of that thing. Look at that difference. Dang. Yeah, no wonder she was smoking. She just had like a bunch of condensation mixing with the oil all down there inside the plenum. This hose is ready to break. It's so weak. That's hopefully some better uh, lighting for both of us. Well, we got one piece out. It looks terrible in there, let me tell you. Oh my goodness. Looks like chocolate milk. So there's the oil drain back hose disconnected. Probably pull this bracket out so we can get better access to this other breather hose that runs up to the top intake plenum. And we'll keep going. It's really not too bad of a job. Like them apples. Ain't no match for the day off DIYer. Let's take a pair of dikes. Let's just cut this bitch right here. Now we can take the breather out. Let's 
So this one is built so you can take the tangs, line them up here, push it in and turn. So that's what we'll do for the install. Because that connector so fucked they engineered that piece in. Let's take a look at the diaphragm. Ooh, crispy. Dang. Yeesh. Although, still good. Slight tear that probably was for me. Still good, folks. Euro. It's all right, it's not that nice, but it gets the job done for cheap. Also, someone was asking about my parts list. Here you go. Uh, valve cover gasket kit, 28 bucks. Spark plug boots, six at 12.30. Thermostat, 60 bucks. Uh, breather kit, 87.26. Air intake boot, 14.69. Radiator hose, $19 uh, lower. Upper 25, water pump 48, ox fan switch 15, um, serpentine belt 18 bucks, AC belt $9, spark plugs uh, six of them for $40, fuel filter 65 bucks. They threw in some swag. This was from ECS Tuning. So just in case you're curious for pricing, I had some viewers ask. Here you go. Let's open up this box. Another thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove the old oil drain back tube. But it's all right. I've done these before. They're not the best, but they work. And I opted for no cold climate package because I don't really need it here. It's on dry. But We'll lubricate the exterior, keep it moist. And that hose is just so gummy. Look at that. Let's get this new breather in. Nice. Return to sender. Until I get these screws started. The breather is in. Wet silicone works good too. If you angle this one in, just take it and push straight in. Cool. I got that off. I need to install it on this side. Damn it. Okay, so this is on, this is on, this is on. It's plugged into the breathers through here. Now we just need the oil drain back tube and valve cover tube. Drain back hose, 
valve cover hose, intake stream hose back up to here with this hose connected on over to here. Now we can put this connector back down. And we got the breather done. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Now we gotta put it all back together again. Ready? Nothing happened. Got a feel for this one, that little stud that holds on this wiring bracket. One's good enough for now. Beautiful. That diesel valve, not going back in. Not willing to ruin the work I put in. All right, gang, we're probably gonna wrap that one up here. We got the engine bay pretty well put back together. I'm not going to finish up this intake side until I get that diesel rebuild kit. I got two on the way, one for this blue manual E46, another one for my automatic, kind of a daily driver for me right now. Um, I also got an oil filter housing gasket plus a new Vanos line. So when we do tear into the front end of this thing for the thermostat, water pump, two belts, we can also take that oil filter housing out of there, reseal it with a new Vanos hose. Let's see what else we got in here. We also got a fuel filter, upper and lower radiator hose, intake boot. So we're getting there and we're very close to getting everything put back together and getting it back into a potentially driving state very soon. Other things we can look forward to. I just ordered a 10 pack of eight foot LED shop lights. So we're gonna tear out these fluorescents. We're gonna get some way better lighting in here for you guys and for me. We also got my new brake bleeder kit here. I'm excited to get some pressure inside of this thing and do a proper flush on all my vehicles. I also got oil and a filter for this E46 so we can tear into the oil filter, see what that looks like. And this thing's really coming along guys. I'm really excited. So in conclusion on today's episode, I'm pretty confident with my theory as far as the oil traveling from the ignition coil to the DME. Feel free to jump into the comments, let me know what you think. There's a wealth of knowledge out there and the community has been great so far. So if you have any tidbits you wanna throw in there, please do in the comment section. The gauge cluster's working fine so far. I'm not gonna run it really until I get the intake side put back together. But after DCing that instrument cluster, I think I got a good reset on it. I'll do a test 19 through the gauge cluster once I get everything put back together and I get the ignition back on. Thanks again if you've made it this far. The channel's been growing like crazy and it's all thanks to you guys. So really appreciate it, it means the world to me. We're not slowing down, we're only gonna keep going. Train's just getting started, baby. So thanks again, subscribe if you enjoyed the content and we'll see you on my next day off.